Good morning and happy Wednesday, October 20th. Um, I hope that you're having a good week. Uh, mine has been super busy. I've been working many hours this week. Um, I know we have the holidays coming up and so we are looking forward to that. Um, looking forward to hopefully being with some family. I hope you have that opportunity too. Um, no matter what your family looks like or your life looks like, I hope that um, the upcoming holiday seasons is a time of rest for you, a time of uh, gathering together with friends and family. Um, we have Hallelujah Harvest coming at Joy Baptist Church on Saturday. I am so excited about this. It's going to be an amazing time. We are going to have pumpkins and straw. We are going to have food and, and lots of donuts and games and prizes. And I think there's lots of minions in your future if you come. <laughs> and minions are happy and they uh, just continue to go no matter what's going on. If you've never watched a minion movie, I suggest you do that. And listen, we are working... Uh, and I know that God's going to be there with us. He's going to be in the midst of all of it. And he's going to help Joy Baptist Church shine like never before. I am so proud uh, and I'm so honored that I get to serve there, that God would even have a place for me to serve at Joy Baptist Church. Listen here, ladies, if you are not serving anywhere in a church Get in a church. Get to Joy Baptist Church. You are missing out. There are some awesome, loving, kind, strong, funny ladies and, uh, and men and so many children. Listen, we have some amazing teachers there. Of course, God has our lesson today exactly designed for me, exactly given to me for something that I need this day. I hope that it encourages you. Um, it sure does me. Here, I want to put my hair right here because see these two little lines here? Those are called 11s. And um, as we age, see these 11s right here? They, they are worry lines, you see, because I probably put my eyes together <laughs> and I'm thinking about my family and I'm praying for my family and I'm praying for my job and I'm praying for my husband um, and I'm praying for my church and I'm praying for my missionaries. And so as we age, our, our bodies are aging, aren't they? And still God brings us to and through so many amazing things in our life, ladies. Let's embrace it instead of, um, you know, not looking forward to the cha challenges, not looking forward to the changes. Let's embrace this story of life that God has for us because it's our story, you see. My story is unique and so is yours. So I want to see what God has for me because he has given me quite the story already. So I can't wait to see until the, um, I can't wait to see the next, hopefully 20, 30 years. I don't know. We'll see how long God leaves me on this earth and how long he can use me to make a difference in this world for him. Listen, and I hope I challenge you to that too. This morning, we're going to go to Mark 14, 72. Um, I did not sleep well last night. Um, sometimes sleep evades me. So I put uh, my spackle on this morning, and that is my, um, my makeup. So I'm hoping that I'm filling in all of the lines that this face is uh, getting as I'm aging. Um, and I hope you do the same thing. Get up. Get your hair done, get some makeup on. It makes you feel better. Um, here, I got my coffee. I got my coffee. All right, let's go to Mark 14, 72. And I want to read this with you. If you have your Bibles, please go there with me. Here, I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to pull this up here. Uh, it says, and the second time the cock crew and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him. Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we are going to get into this Bible study. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for another day, Lord. 
Oh my word, Jesus, I was driving home yesterday. And, oh, it's, it's a beautiful picture, Lord, out in that world. Oh, I was looking out. I was driving home from our Ipsy office, Lord, and the trees. Oh, I couldn't even make up the colors, Lord Jesus. Oh, how gracious and merciful you are to us. Father Jesus, help us to look for you, God, no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what meetings you've just come out of, no matter what is happening in your family, no matter what things, Lord, that we feel like we've been defeated on, Lord. Let us hold on to the hope that is Jesus Christ. It reminds me, Lord, this is not my home. I'm just a passing through. And God, help me in my times, in my days, to be constant in prayer, Lord, for whatever situation or whatever person that you brought across my path, God. Help me now more than ever to be a woman of God. Standing firm with you, Jesus. And even, Lord, I love this story because so many times, Lord, I failed you. And still, you're right there with me, Lord. You're right there with me. Father Jesus, please, God, go before me in this message, God. Help it to help someone, Jesus. Help it to make a difference for someone, Jesus. That they would choose you and that they would want to know my Savior. Father Jesus, I love you. Amen. All right, as we get into this story. Um, here, I just want to read a couple things in this. It says, God, give me relief from my unbelief. I pray this not because I don't believe God is real and that God is good. I pray this when he allows into my life, when, when what he allows into my life does not feel good or seem good to me. When we assume we know what a good God would do and he doesn't do it. That's when things can, get, can start to get a bit complicated. It's the place where doubts are formed and disappointment grows, the place where we are tempted to distance ourselves from God with a heart of distrust. And then she goes into talking about Peter. She says, I can't help but think about Peter, a man who boldly declared to Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will, dis I will never disown you. Let's go to Mark 14, 31. Let's read this. Let's go back in our story and see what's happening. Uh, and in Mark 14, 31, it says, But he spake more vehemently, if I, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee anywise. Likewise also said they all. So here's Jesus um, telling him the story of what's going to happen. And his disciples loved him so much. They all said that they would die with him. Um, let's take a look. And she wants to take a closer look at that story. Um, and I do love my Savior so. Um, he sure has uh, done so many miracles for me. Has he done miracles for you? I want you to think about that right now. I want you to remember the things that Jesus has done for you. And even if right now, right now in your life, it doesn't look like what you th should think it should look like. He hasn't answered your prayers yet. He hasn't answered your prayers yet. I want you, girlfriend, you, you get your battle armor on. You get it on. And I don't care if you're at home. I don't care if you're at church. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care where you are. Get your battle armor on because there are demons out there who hate us. Listen, and they want us not to show up. When I talk about not showing up, I mean that we are not studying the word of God. We are not getting to church. We are not having prayer time with Jesus like we should, praying for our missionaries and our pastors and our leaders in our churches and praying for the, the uh, churches that teach Jesus Christ all over this world, praying for our world leaders. Listen, ladies, that's our job. And as soldiers for Christ, we need to show up. And then we, let's, let's go ahead and keep getting into this uh, message. It says, while we see Jesus remaining faithful in the midst of the pain and turmoil of a beloved friend's betrayal in verses 43 and 45, the high priest's interrogation 53 to 65, we find Peter with faltering faith as he stood waiting in the courtyard in verses 66 to 72. He was afraid, cold, forgetful. 
Peter soon denied the one who loved him most. Once, twice, three times, a rooster's shrill cry ushered in shocking realization that the very thing Peter swore he'd never do, he did. And as much as we want to shake our head at Peter, I for one know I can't because I get it. I really do. I know what it's like to have intentions that are good, but follow through that falls to pieces. It's easy to say the words, we're all in for Jesus and we'll do anything he asks, but then we get rejected or hurt by someone or become afraid. We'll fail and it becomes difficult to live out those words. Fear, pain, and insecurities can really do a number on our hearts. They certainly did a number on Peter's as he watched Jesus, the one he had seen perform miracles, allow himself to be bound and arrested. Jesus was supposed to be the king who would deliver the Jewish people from the op oppression of the Romans. How could this be happening? Peter didn't realize this was the only way he or anyone else could experience Jesus reigning as king in eternity. And that's something I like to remind myself. Listen, this is not my home. I'm just passing to, through. And God's giving me such an am amazing, exciting story. So I need to hang on to him because this ride is crazy. I don't know about you. I hope you have a crazy ride. That means God loves you, actually. That doesn't mean he hates you. That means he loves you. And listen, he's right there. You hang on to him, girlfriend. You hang on to him and don't you lose your hope either. I want to keep reading this. So in a moment of doubt and disappointment, Peter chose to distance himself from Jesus, distancing himself to the point of complete denial. To, not, to deny something is to declare it's untrue. To deny Jesus is to say with our words, thoughts, or actions that we really don't believe the truth of who Jesus says he is or what he says he'll do. How, break, how heartbreaking for us. How heartbreaking for Jesus. Let's go into Luke 22, 61 to 62. I want to read this. And I'm looking at my time here. Let's see. Luke 22. Oh, I got to go to the next book. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Here we go. Tw uh, 22. 22. Twenty two sixty one to sixty two, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. That the look that passed between Jesus and Peter wasn't one of condemnation. It wasn't an I told you so moment. I believe Jesus' eyes were filled with compassion for Peter, the same compassion he has for us today, a look that invites us to trust him and draw near to him once again. Oh, friend, we need to ask ourselves where we're denying Jesus' truth in our lives. Where are we denying Jesus' healing or denying his forgiveness for ourselves and for others? Where are we denying Jesus' redemption? Where are we denying Jesus is hope. Nothing is beyond the reach of Jesus. In him, everything is certain, no matter what we've done, no matter what the enemy or our life circumstances may say, nothing is beyond the reach of Jesus. And I know today when we confess where we may be denying him in our lives, he will look for us. He will look at us with the same compassion he did Peter. So when doubts form and disappointments drag us down, we don't have to give in to the tempting voice of the enemy telling us to distrust God. We need to draw near to the Lord and pray. I don't have to understand this to trust you with this. I will not deny your power just because I'm afraid and I don't see evidence of you working now, God. I will kneel in prayer and ask you to help me give relief from any and all unbelief. I want to read that again because that sounded funny. I will kneel in prayer and ask you to help me relieve, help give me relief from any and all unbelief. Then I will rise up and keep watching for evidence of all you are doing, big and small. Listen, Pastor uh, Jay in his message Sunday talked about a missionary who was in the the Ukraine and how him and his wife went back, had, had gone out of the Ukraine and they went back in amidst all the fighting. Um, 
Um, listen, there is a battle going on, ladies, right now, wherever you are. And uh, Satan hates us and he hates our children. He hates our grandchildren. He hates our great-grandchildren. And listen here, we need to get dressed. We need to get our armor on. All of it. We need to show up. We need to help whoever God has given us, whoever God has placed with us. It's not a mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. I make lots of mistakes like denying Christ. I make lots of mistakes like saying the wrong thing in a, in a meeting, saying the wrong thing and denying my Jesus. Listen here, it's important now more than ever that we show up. We get our Bible out. We study the word of God. We call out to Jesus. We have that prayer for all of the people that he's given us. And like I said, all the things that I had mentioned before. Well, I'm going to get my coffee. Um, it is 741, so I am late. But I hope this message helped you. I hope that you grab your coffee, grab your uh, caffeine, whatever you got to do. I hope that we show up for Jesus because he's never let me down. He's always there. When I call out to him, he's there. All right, you can do this. And show up to Joy on Saturday for Hallelujah Harvest. I love you.